Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. And in today's video, I'll be talking about data visualization using Orange. And to demonstrate data visualization, I will be working on a file which is called as drug file. Now, this is a data set which is in CSV format. We have got patient medical case history. As you can see here, there are seven columns. First is age of the patient, gender of the patient, BP level of the patient, cholesterol level, sodium concentration in the blood, potassium concentration in the blood sample. And finally, you have the variable drug, which indicates which drug did the patient respond to. All of these patients suffered from a common illness. The variable gender, blood pressure, cholesterol are categorical variables. The target variable here, the drug, is also a categorical variable. So we have got four categorical variables in the data set, and we have got three scale variables, namely age, sodium concentration in the blood sample, and the potassium concentration in the blood sample. If I scroll down, I can check the sample size of the data set. I've got 200 patients. So this is a good data set in the sense that uh, I've got uh, different columns, and I can visualize and find out if there are any patterns in the data set. Now, how do I visualize this particular data set? Let me open up Orange. In Orange, the first thing that I wish to do is load the data set. To load the data set, let me click on the file widget. Let me double click on the file widget to open the file. Here it is anyway pointing towards the location. I can also click on the browse option. It will take me straight to the location of the file. My file, my source file is in desktop. There's a folder that I've created called the statistics and R sample files. So within this drug one and I can just click on open and maybe specify this as reload. And once I click on this, orange displays the contents of the file. You can see here there are 200 records, seven features with no missing values. Data has no target variable and there are zero meta attributes. So. In the second portion of the window, what you can see is the variable properties. The variable names are displayed in the first column like age, gender, blood pressure, so on and so forth. The variable type, that is whether a variable is numeric or categorical is displayed. The third variable role is defined. And then we have values. For categorical variable, orange displays the categories that are present in this particular variable. Like for gender, we have two categories, females and males. For BP level, we have three categories, high, low, normal. And for cholesterol level, we have two categories, high and normal. Now, the variable, the last variable, that is the seventh variable drug, by default, orange considers uh, this particular variable as a feature variable. I will change this to target and click on apply. So at this stage, I have loaded the data set. After loading the data set, to see the contents of the file, what I will do is I will click on data table. Now I'll establish a connection between file and data table widget. Open up data table. And as you can see here, there are a lot of colored bars. If you don't want to see these bars, you can unclick on visualize numeric values and unclick on color by instance classes. So this is the data set that we have, all the seven variables and 200 records are displayed here. If you want to visualize some of these numeric values, you can display a bar. Longer the bar, bigger the magnitude. Shorter the bar, smaller is the magnitude. If you want to further color it by the target variable, you can just click on target by instance classes. You can see here multiple colors. Some of the, uh, some of the bars are yellow in color, others in green, some others are in blue. Now, the length of the bar also varies. Let me draw your attention to the first case, 23. So here you see a small yellow colored bar. This is a short bar because the value is only 23. Compare this with another yellow colored bar for patient number 14. This is also colored in yellow because yellow is the color denoted for drug Y. And the value is 74. The patient's age is 74, which is way higher than uh, the first patient, and therefore, there's a longer bar for this particular cell. Similarly, you can see 
blue colored bar, this corresponds to drug A, and the green colored bar refers to drug C. So this is a visual summary of the entire data set that we have. Let me close this particular window. So at this stage, what we have done is we have loaded the data set and we have displayed the, the contents of the file. The first thing that I wish to do here is understand what is the proportion of patients who responded to each of the drug type. Now, to do this, I'll have to click on the visualize option. So let me scroll down, choose the visualize option. Again, let me scroll up. You can see here the different options for visualize. You can do a box plot, you can do a violin plot, distribution plot, line plot, bar plot, scatter plot. These are some of the options that Orange provides. I will choose the distribution plot establish a connection between the data table and distributions, open up this. Right now you can see the distribution only for drug. Now what I'll do is I'll just choose none and now click on drug. It is showing me only for drug C, that is because we have selected only drug C in the earlier column. What I need to do is I need to remove this selection. If you can see here, earlier I had selected only drug eight. So if I can just deselect this particular option, close this window and then come to distributions. You can see here the distribution for all the five drugs is shown here. You can see here drug Y tops the list because majority of the patients have responded to drug Y followed by drug X and then drug A, very few people have responded to drug C and drug B. So if you want to do a bar chart, this is a very simple way of constructing a bar chart. That is, uh, you can uh, use the distribution plot to check for a categorical variable, what is the distribution of each and every category within this particular variable. So that is as far as the bar chart is concerned. Let me close this. Going uh, forward, now a bar chart, is used when you have one variable. What if you want to show the relationship between two variables? One of the best charts to show the relationship between two variables would be a scatter plot. So let me click on the scatter plot, drag this down, establish a connection with the data table, and open up the scatter plot. As you can see here, in the y axis, in the y axis, we have taken sodium, and in the x axis, we have taken potassium, and you have uh, different. Uh, circles, there is no distinct pattern. I don't see any linear relationship. I also don't see any non-linear relationship between the variables. What I'll do here is choose the color option. Now in the drop down menu, I will color it with respect to the drug. Now this is very interesting because the moment I color each and every point with respect to the drug type which a patient responded to, you see a region here which is wholly yellow. There are only yellow color circles here. And after a point, especially when the potassium level in the blood sample is greater than 0 0.04, you see multiple colors. And each color, you can look at the legend here, blue corresponds to drug A, red corresponds to drug B, and green corresponds to drug C. And the yellow color circles that you see here, all of them correspond to drug Y. So there must be a threshold for the sodium concentration and the potassium concentration in the blood sample of a patient to which when you have certain threshold, you only respond to drug Y. Why do I say drug Y? Because yellow colored circles correspond to drug Y. And there must be a threshold above which you may respond to any other drug except drug Y. Question is, what is that threshold? In the, in the blood sample of a patient for which people only respond to one particular type. To understand this better, as you can see here in the y-axis, I have sodium and in the x-axis, I have potassium. I will, I will construct a new variable, which is the sodium to potassium ratio in the blood sample of a patient. Let me close this. To construct a new variable, I will be using the feature construct constructor. Let me go to the data option, scroll down. 
you have this particular widget, which is called as the feature constructor. The word feature here uh, refers to columns. So I'm constructing a new column. So let me establish a connection between data table and the feature constructor, open up this particular widget. And as you can see here, under the variable definition, I'm creating a new variable, which is called as NA underscore K, which is nothing but a simple ratio between sodium and potassium, sodium divided by potassium. Let me check whether this works. I'll click on send. Yes, it's working. <clears throat> so this is the formula that I'll be using, sodium divided by potassium, and I'll store the result in a new variable, which is called as NA underscore K. And this is a numeric variable. Let me close this window. If you have to see this in the original data set, what you need to do is you have to scroll up and again, click on data table. Establish a connection after feature constructor because the new variable has been produced now at this stage. If you establish a connection with the old file, you'll not be able to see this. Let me double click on this. As you can see here, the eighth variable now, that is sodium underscore K. This is the new variable that we have created. And for the first patient, it is 25.3. How did we obtain this number? By taking a simple ratio between 0.79 and 0 0.03. We have divided the column values of sodium with that of potassium to generate the last column, NA underscore K. Let me close this window. Now, the new file, sorry, the new field that I've created can be used to study the relationship between the sodium to potassium concentration in the blood sample and what is its relationship with that of the drug type. To do this, what I'll do is I will go to visualize option. In visualize, as I scroll up, I have the distribution plot. Let me use the distribution plot and establish a connection. Open up distribution. You can see only two bars because the width by default is considered as 20. I can reduce the bin width. As you scroll to the left, the bin width can be reduced. And you can see multiple bars here. Split by option is useful because right now it is none. I will set it to drug. The moment I sort of color it with different drugs, you see here, this is interesting because at this stage, that is when the sodium to potassium ratio is less than 14, people have responded to multiple colors. You see some of these bars are colored in blue. Some of them are colored in red. Others are colored in, in, in green. So when the sodium to potassium ratio, when the ratio is less than around 14.6, I would say people have responded to multiple drugs. On the other hand, in fact, uh, the correct value would be 15.6. If the sodium to potassium ratio is greater than this value of 14.6, people have responded to multiple, people have responded to only one drug, namely drug Y. That's why you're seeing only yellow colored bars here. So next time there is a patient and you check his, check the ratio of sodium to potassium concentration, the blood sample, and if that turns out to be less than 15.6, you can suggest any of these four drugs, namely drug A, B, C, or X. If the sodium to potassium concentration, the blood sample is greater than 14.6, you can suggest only drug Y. So with this, I've come to the end of today's presentation. In today's presentation, we looked at three plots. One is a distribution plot. Second one is a scatter plot. The third option is we looked at a feature constructor, which was used to derive a new variable. But in terms of plot, we looked at a distribution plot. Once again, we could uh, construct a histogram and overlay it with different drug types. Thank you very much for watching today's presentation. Have a good day. I request you to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button.